Did you know that after the completion of the construction of one of the tallest buildings in the world, the Empire State Building, many people were afraid to get close to it. They believed that a building 1,250 feet long could collapse at any moment. It took many years and the construction of other skyscrapers for people to get used to it. I wonder how they would react if they found out that oil rigs being built in the seas are much taller structures than most modern skyscrapers. The largest of them reach a height of 2,001 feet, and today we will see how it works. In 1995, American researchers conducted exploration work in the Gulf of Mexico to search for minerals on the seabed. Huge reserves of oil have been discovered 130 miles southeast of New Orleans. The discovery made the researchers very happy, but immediately posed the difficult task for the oil men – how to extract black gold at a depth of 1,754 feet. A lot of people say, why would you go to an environment like this to find oil, said Mickey Driver, spokesman for Chevron Texaco. Well, this is where nature has put the oil. You want to see the Grand Canyon? You go to the Grand Canyon. You want to find oil? You have to go where it is. It is based on this philosophy that the company decided to build the deepest oil platform in the world. Over the next two years, engineers and designers struggled to create a new platform that could not only extract oil from the depths of the ocean, but also provide a high level of safety for both workers and the environment simultaneously. In 1997, after solving all the difficulties, purchasing equipment and concluding contracts with construction companies, the installation of the structure was launched. Initially, a floating structure weighing a total of 43,000 tons was installed. An additional structure of 7,500 tons was installed on top, where individual parts of the platform rise up to 210, 141, and 59 feet. To effectively deal with sea waves and weather, the swing of the structure was adjusted by 2%, which from time to time creates noticeable vibrations during movement. In comparison, the sway of tall structures on the ground is typically 0.5%, which allows people to feel comfortable despite the movement of the building from the weather. Although building on the sea was a rather laborious task, however, the most serious part of the construction was the creation of wells to the bottom of the ocean. Undercurrents, marine life, salt water, and high pressure – all this could destroy one of the 14 production wells at any time. Repair work would take a long time during which oil would spill into the open ocean, causing harm to all marine life. But the builders were able to cope with this difficult task. Finally, in 2000, the final stage of construction was carried out. The last replacement unit was brought and installed. The first attempt to install it failed. The unit ended up on the seabed. The company's total costs amounted to about $500 million and the oil rig itself was named Petronius after the name of the area. Upon completion of the construction and entry into service, everyone who visited Petronius noted a high level of noise. The constantly running generators, pumps, and rotors of the drilling rigs create such deafening sounds that earplugs are a must for all workers and visitors. What is more, all those present are required to wear other protective equipment – helmets, special goggles, steel-toed boots. This is done since almost everything on the structure is flammable, and any form of negligence can lead to serious injury. Another inconvenience is the rocking of the platform. This creates a noticeable discomfort of movement when you get carried in one direction, then in the other. This is especially acute during bad weather. However, in addition to the difficulty of movement, bad weather creates more dangerous situations. For instance, Hurricane Katrina did little damage to the oil rig allowing it to continue operating normally. But Hurricane Ivan put the facilities out of action for six months. For such situations, as many as three rescue capsules have been created for the team, equipped with everything necessary to survive at sea for several days, while rescuers will look for them. Nevertheless, this object is under the constant control of rescue services, and in the event of an incident, help will come within a few hours. Because of such difficult working conditions, the company that owns Chevron Texaco has established special rules. For example, all workers work in shifts. For two weeks, they live on the platform and pump oil and gas. And after that, they rest at home for two weeks. The company pays for all the travel costs. The minimum salary is $50,000 and then increases depending on qualifications and experience. For workers on the platform, there are soundproof rooms for sleeping, 
there is a gym and a dining room. The company's efforts have paid off many times over. After all, today Petronius works around the clock, producing 60,000 barrels of oil and about 3 million cubic meters of natural gas every 24 hours. A reliable protection system for 20 years has never failed. We almost always associate oil and natural gas production with something very dangerous and hazardous to the environment. However, if you approach the extraction wisely, then the negative effects can be minimized. This is exactly what the Chevron Texaco company has shown us by building the largest oil platform in the world. And despite the improvement in technology over the past 20 years, not a single surface structure has been able to come close to the results of Petronius. However, with each subsequent year, the risk of emergencies due to the wear and tear of equipment is growing. But so far, the company has been able to solve all problems with the least losses and costs. What do you think of this platform? How safe is it now and how safe will it be in the future? Please don't forget to share your opinion in the comments below the video. Take care.